flying blind. Navigation's recalibrating after the engine failure. Is the sun coming up? Yes, sir. Then put it on the left. There's a sequence in the middle where the helicarrier is attacked by the mercs and everybody's trying to save it. And it's, it's, some of the engines have been damaged and it's falling out of the sky. We restructured that pretty heavily because uh, you know, during production there's things you can't get or, or the scenes don't quite end up the way you wanted them to be. We moved a lot of stuff around there. Um, it was, a, you know, intercut quite differently in the script. But the beats were the beats. You know, the Hulk attacking the jet and all those sort of things and, and the transformation, all those things. Those were all in the movie, in the screenplay as they were, but we moved them around quite a bit and, and adjusted some of the dialogue to make that work just to get the build up so that everybody's working in different parts of the ship parallel action you know, needed to be balanced. So originally, it was much more linear, kind of character to character to character. We intercut it a lot more heavily. A lot of it was created in visual effects. I mean, a lot of those shots were not made during production. Um, I mean, there's plate elements that were designed for other shots, and we repurposed them. And like when, when Captain America comes running out and the camera pulls back and you see the engine on fire, that was that was a like a kind of a, a modest pullback, and then we found a way to make it go really big. And when he jumps up to to do his little uh, gymnastics routine to get to the other thing, that's not that's a digital cap. It's not a real person. Um, we changed what he did, his blocking, and so forth. So I mean, it's like every shot, every little beat has been manipulated heavily to to make it work. Uh, with the exception of the Hulk and the jet, I mean. A lot of, there was a lot of work done on that scene editorially, but that's generally what was laid out visual effects wise early on in terms of the beats and, and, the, and the structure of the shots. We cut it down a little bit and redesigned the shot when he falls out at the very end. They bust into the bridge and Nick Fury does some like, you know, Nick Fury judo on them. And uh, <laughs> Kieran cut that and, and, and solved a lot of problems in that scene because because you know uh, these fight things are shot in tiny little increments, and they they have to flow, and they have to feel violent and intense, and sometimes it's not easy to, to get that to happen because they're they're shot in these little segments, and you've got, you know, you know Sam's like, you know, does can, he, he can only do one thing, and then there's a stuntman that takes over at a certain point. You have to make that all feel seamless because it's not always the actors doing these things, and the guys they got to play the mercs come in and they fall down and they don't know what they're doing. So it, 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 it can look pretty, pretty tacky. Um, and in that case, it was a tough one to solve because it required a lot of like exploration and he did a lot of that and it, it's in the movie. Okay, the relays are attacked. What's our next move? Even if I clear the rotors, this thing won't re-engage without a jump. I'm gonna have to get in there and push. That sequence was the kind of sequence that where you got to really cut the whole reel um, because you can't tell how any individual constituent part is working until you watch the whole the whole arc of the of the set piece. Um, so I spent a lot of time on that sequence because it, it was you couldn't just work on a it wasn't micro you know the problems problem solving weren't just about individual beats it was about the arc of the whole sequence and I think that's an important thing that I've learned as I've worked on a lot more films. It's not. So the scene's important and the individual beats are important, but it has to work over the reel. I mean, if you can make the reel work and you have seven reels or eight reels, then the movie's going to work if each reel works. You don't want to get microed into dealing with just tiny little bits of performance or tiny bits of rhythm. You want it to feel, you want it to have a flow. You want to be able to sit back, get away from that keyboard, get in front of your avid so you're not tempted to stop it and change it, and force yourself to watch it without being able to push stop. If you can do that with the scene you're cutting, you're, and it's working, and you're not, and you don't, you know, run back around and turn it off. Then you're getting somewhere. But I think it's really important to do that. I've learned to do that. I've, it was not easy because I'd, you'd be like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, and you just you end up cutting all day, and you never watch it. And then you watch it, like, ooh, that's not so good, because context will reveal everything to you when you're cutting something, especially something that's dense and has a lot of different pieces that are working against each other. Mm -hmm.